the views and opinions expressed on this program are those of the participants and do not reflect the views of the program or the program under it. Your voice, your view, your vision. For the first time in nearly two decades, students in New York City's public, middle, and high schools will be required to take sex education classes. That's how many of you do it. The question is, is it good news? Well, that may be up for debate. What will they learn in this class? Who decides what's appropriate for your child? And coming up on today's edition of Perspectives, we'll hear from a coalition that says parents should have a greater say in the new curriculum and accident based sex education if a parent should choose. Stay with us, the new fall season of Perspectives starts now. There's no school. Yeah. Hello, thank you for joining us, and welcome. I'm Darren Hyman, your host, and remember, if you want to catch some past episodes of Perspectives, all you got to do is log on to the web at www.dropset.org, backslash perspectives, you'll see some past episodes, you'll also be able to leave your comments, share, and also rate the videos. You can also email us, and you can send us suggestions and show ideas, and certainly feel free to share your perspective about any topic with us. Well, it's been a wildly, wildly debated, I should say, about what? Exactly what you talking about, Dan? What we're talking about schools and teaching students about sex. As of this past January, over 20 states have mandated sex education in schools. Though this is a good venture, the question remains what should schools actually teach about sex? Well, our guests in studio certainly have an answer. We welcome now our guest. And one is Michael Benjamin, who's the New York City Parents' Choice Coalition organizer. And then we have Greg Funstein. Executive Director of the Pure Studio Foundation. I almost pronounced it right. Very close. So thank you so much for sharing both with us here at Home Perspectives. As we talk about this, it's going to be very, very close to the heart because for a lot of parents, they're concerned about sex education. Wanting their, parents, their, their children to have education, but yet and still, the way the New York City is presented it poses some questions to you guys. Uh, I'll start off first with you, Mike, as to uh, what, what are you finding difficult or controversial about this new sex education program. Let's begin with offer one curriculum, and that's a conference of sex education program, which more, it's, in, in my shorthand, it gives a wink and a nod to teenage sex. Because kids are part of, part of, not just part of a, a teenage life. If they, should, if they do it, they should do it safely, do it challenging, etc. We're saying that parents would really want their kids to have an abstinence-based sex education program. So we're asking the city to have, offer an alternative program for parents who opt out of the regular conference program and have an opt-in program where they can still learn about sex education but from an abstinence-based perspective. Let's talk a little bit about this right now. So sex education is available in schools, but January is something else occurred. Let's, let's that. That's right. There are currently uh, a large percentage of schools actually offer programs like the ones being mandated. Uh, the city has been recommending these programs for a few years. Uh, and while they don't keep good data on which schools are using it, somewhere between 60 and 80 percent of the schools are already using the program. But come January, it'll be mandatory to use the program. Uh, they don't have to use exactly the programs that are recommended by the city, but they have to use programs that are what are called comprehensive programs, which means that they teach kids their options, but they also teach them how to use condoms, uh, how to use contraception, where to find it, and so on. Uh, what this mandate does not allow is a program which is uh, abstinence centered, a program which uh, certainly tells kids about condoms and about their, their weaknesses and their shortcomings and encourages them to make the healthiest choice at their age, which is to be abstinent, uh, which is what most parents want for their children. And abstinence is a program in the curriculum that's out there, that's right? Right. There are some things that are evidence based that show that it has to have this evidence based program that, that are better effective. Um, there was public facing uh, a number of the other programs that uh, are not quite as effective as conference based programs. There are, there are studies that have been done on the programs that are recommended by the city, uh, showing that they are effective in delaying uh, sexual initiation among young teenagers. 
and, and that they, they do have a certain amount of, of uh, effect in terms of having to use condoms and contraception more frequently. Uh, but there are abstinence programs out there that are at least as effective. There have been some studies that have compared programs together and found the abstinence program to be more successful. Obviously, there are a lot of programs out there that are not all effective. We're not asking for an annual abstinence program. We're asking for it to be uh, an evidence-based program that's been uh, studied by you know, in a, in a rigorous uh, methodology by uh, you know, qualified researchers to be effective in delaying uh, sexual misuse. And, and so this, this program right now that's been introduced by the mayor is as a result of uh, trying to really curtail actually real sexual activity amongst young people, particularly in a minority community. This is true. And it's you know, that, that sexual activity among young people around the country has been on the decline. Fewer and fewer uh, young people report having had sex uh, in high school than they did uh, even 10 years ago. So things are moving in the right direction. Uh, and, and, and as we say, we're, we're not allowed to post sex education. Uh, we just think that parents should have uh, a say in what their kids are taught. Uh, not all parents will find the curriculum that the city recommends offensive. Uh, we do. Uh, I wouldn't let my children go through this program. Uh, many other parents, I think, will agree with it. They teach them that, you know, that sex is natural, it's part of, part of life, but that's true. They also sort of make it uh, something that's going to happen to them, uh, make it so they also going to have sex, make it be safely with condoms. But they don't find the, the risk of sex, sexual uh, relations at a young age. Uh, for STDs, the fact that condoms fail 15 out of 100 times. Um, the risk to one person as a, as a young teen, teenage and small parent. Mm-hmm. Those things are not discussed. I want to look at the screen here because uh, if you look on the screen here, uh, it says a little bit about the mayor's approach to uh, sex education. So let's put some clarity to this. When it talks about safe for sex, it says, uh, let's go condom shopping. Any advice before I put the rubber to the road? Uh, stay the sex, uh, stay sex between women. Then talk about contraception and pill. Uh, where do I get it? How much does it cost? How do my parents, staff, should know? And uh, four kinds of condoms. The diet for consumers, pregnancy options. What about abortion? Where how? Uh, and where can pregnant women get adoption information? These are things that are included. Those are things that are included. And these are the questions that I guess people who have, or, you know, opponents really have some strong, some strong feelings about. When it talks about men's sexual health, these are a couple of questions that are, that are being asked, and is it correct? Please stop me when I'm wrong. Um, is it possible to break with people? Uh, uh, it's a particular hurt because women's sexual health, um, one of the time we get a GYN exam, lumpy breast, uh, and then miscellaneous physical cause of my low sex drive, could it be Birth control, uh, birth, birth control pills, and being allergic to things. Just some of the things that we talked about in this school-based sex education program, and I guess for some people, from the general onset, it is a little deep, very deep. And the American College of Pediatricians say that abstinence education is, is the best way to get to young people, and also it should also be age appropriate. Mm-hmm. You don't call it the age. I don't. Let me give you an example. Uh, there's a homework assignment in the high school cooking, the program that's open at the high schools, where they're, they're asked to go down to the local pharmacy or corner store and, and write down a list of the different brands of condoms that are for sale at the store. How much they cost, uh, whether they're lubricated or not, uh, and then, you know, you know, whether they'd be comfortable you know, buying condoms at the store and so on. So the kids are going down and making a shopping list for someone. There's another homework assignment that encourages them, or requires them, right? It's either call or visit a reproductive health center. And they have a, a list of services they have to check off whether they provide contraceptive, uh, FBI screening, whether or not they have an emergency contraception, sterilization. Uh, you know, it doesn't list their abortion, but most clinics that offer that things a lot less than also offer abortion. And then the following one, because I'm going to ask them to uh, map out the route to the clinic, not from home, but from school. Uh, and it asks them, you know, what bus would you take? You know, what suburb is it? How would you walk there? And so it's, it's, it's putting kids directly in touch with the providers of uh, reproductive health care. Uh, and, and they make clear, because the kids are asked also to write down the confidentiality policy of the clinic, that, that the parents don't need to know about this. Right. And if parents don't know this, in New York State, your child can receive any of this care from a uh, from, uh, health provider, including an abortion, without you being notified, uh, and certainly without your permission. Uh, and so the, the schools are very careful to make sure the kids understand that. They can go down, they can get condoms, they can get contraception, they can get the pill, they can get an abortion, they can get emergency contraception, all without you being aware of it. And they're even encouraged to map out the route from school. And this begins at age 13. Yes. That program is actually recommended for ninth graders. So that's 
I'm not sure what it is. Yeah, it's the, I mean, but still, that's kind of like pushing the envelope a little bit. Mm-hmm. What would you guys like to see happen, ideally, with this, with the, in, in this particular situation? Obviously, January is coming around the corner. If you would have an ideal situation, what would it be? I'd like to ask you to go to website, learn about the curriculum, visit their school principal, talk to him, talk to her, and tell them what they want with respect to certain for their child. So to know what curriculum is, to see it, view it, and see whether it matches their own particular views. And for parents to become more involved, and children and young people want to hear from their parents. They want guidance from mom and dad. Mom and dad can't, can't just feed their, their authority to the school. Because the schools are not going to be the same sort of thing that parents would, would do for, the, for their sons and daughters. And children really want to hear from mom and dad. Mm-hmm. So as we talk about this, we heard a little bit about a opt-out policy. Right now, as you said, uh, in January it will be mandated, but then there is this opt-out policy. Let's go over the opt-out policy and what are some of the options that parents have. Mm-hmm. Uh, under New York State law, any parent can opt their kid out of any sex education program uh, if it is a sense of any way to their school. Uh, so if, if, if it is, you're certainly welcome to opt your child out, even though I say you have a sample letter that opt your, your child out. Um, it's also true that under New York State law, a parent can opt their child out of any HIV AIDS curriculum, which, uh, as far as I can tell, these programs are trying to combine the two, sex ed and HIV AIDS. Uh, you can opt your child out of that for any reason. It doesn't have to be a um, And then finally, there's the common distribution program. Uh, schools are not allowed to distribute uh, condoms to your child if your child opts out. It's, it's in fact against the law for a school to just have a bowl of condoms in the nurse's office. Uh, students have to receive counseling when they receive condoms from the public schools in the state of New York. So we've encouraged parents if they, to take a look at the curriculum. Uh, federal law also protects their right to look at the curriculum. So they can go down to the school. Uh, if you want to see for yourself, see what they're teaching your kids, you can ask them to pick them. They're required by law to show it to you. Um, Take a look, and if you find it offensive or you, you prefer something else, you can opt your kids out. But more importantly, we're hoping that parents will uh, contact the mayor and, and the chancellor, as well as the principals, and ask for an alternative program. Because, uh, you know, we're, again, we're not opposed to sex education. We just would prefer a program that would be in consonance with the values of many parents. And there are, as we said, abstinence education programs that have been uh, shown through regular study to be effective, uh, and they, they teach kids that they have to have choice for them if they're interested in that. One of the reasons why I'm going to take a look at what you guys have to say today. We took our journey down to the streets. We asked the question, actually, who should be determining what students decide about sex? We put that question to you in our question of the day. And here's what some of you have to say. I feel like the government should not impose. I feel like that's a very personal matter. So parents should have a say in sex education being taught to their children at school. Um, I think it's a delicate line, but I definitely think that government probably should make the determination because government is not separate from the parents directly because the parents are involved in the process of electing the people who make the decisions. So I feel like if parents don't think that the people who are in government who affect education policy are making the right decisions in terms of how their children are educated, and most people shouldn't be in that place. I mean, the parents are responsible for that. I believe um, the government shouldn't do anything without the approval of the people. So if, the, if there's something the government is doing and the parents are against, um, then there's something wrong with the government. You know, so it's like a question that we shouldn't even be asking because the government should only be doing things based on what the people want. Well, I was uh, be like a bad because in some hours on the final educator, the school is a, is a function of the school to, um, to teach the kids about uh, sex education. However, um, the, 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 the only response of the parents is the school being into it. And let's go back and recap. I mean, for some people, when you talk about sex education, there's no doubt schools could have the opportunity or should have the opportunity in the hearts and minds of some to teach about sex education. The question of the debate becomes exactly what is being taught and how is it going to be taught and how is it going to be taught. And so that's where the tension and the controversy actually comes in. When we come back after the break, we're going to look back at New York City Mayor Michael Bloomberg's plan for sex education, the curriculum. Take a little bit more of a look at it. Hear from our uh, guests who are here today sharing with us and getting their perspective on what's wrong with the mayor's plan and how we can adjust it, as well as parental involvement. You who are apparently listening, we want to see you and get you involved in this process as well. Stay with us and tell me what you want to step in. Yeah. You know that getting up and getting active for just 15 minutes a day is all it takes to help you get stronger, look better, and feel great. But that's the first thing that just helps help you in front of you. It can taste better too. Eating better and getting more active is easier than you think. 
Keep watching for some fun and easy ways to discover the magic of happy living in your life. America. Hey, Mom. You know, girl, I used to start off in my day. Ready? Okay. <laughs> You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of siblings in foster care who take you just as you are. We are talking about the type of the sex education in both the middle and the high schools, and ongoing debate as to the curriculum. What's actually being taught? A parents in agreement with it, or even elected officials in agreement with it. I guess there's been a bit sharing a little bit and talking about the marriage and place to uh, sex education. And uh, as we started before the break, uh, you know, we, we heard from, from actually uh, some people on the street who say, you know, like government, some people say, listen, government has no business doing this, you know, putting out. What you do. And then there's other people who say, listen, you know, when it comes to education, we need, we need to have that kind of education. So I guess looking at it from, from you know, the perspective of knowing that education is necessary, mm-hmm. uh, it, it's really about, from you guys' perspective, informing the parents to let them know what's actually being taught. Right. What's being taught and what they want taught. And what's the sort of parents want after the state education taught to their child. Uh, also, um, the next program stems from his young man going to this program. He wants to stem the tide of, of rising rates of the teen pregnancy and young men becoming fathers while they're still in school. But the best way to do that is through abstinence. It's not, it's not about wearing, it's not about wearing a condom. It's about making a choice not to have sex, not to push a young girl into having sex and then having a child. Those are the things we want to avoid. And the best way to do that is through abstinence. Kind of teaches children more than just how to make condom. This is about character development. This is about how to, how to be a, a proper boyfriend or girlfriend, how to treat your partner with respect. Those are things that such a program would, would be about. Mm-hmm. Is there an, a, a lack of understanding going on the part of parents right now as to what exactly the curriculum is? Are you thinking to just people say, okay, well, you know, sex ed, we have that in school, sex ed is out there, um, and really not just knowing, is there a, a view of there is a strong lack of understanding? Of I do think so. I think that uh, there are probably some parents who don't have any problem with enjoying this issue, but I think that there are plenty of parents who have found it offensive. Uh, you know, the the, the, the scripted don't necessarily represent the values of parents. Uh, and it's true, as uh, one of the gentlemen said on the street, that you know, the government has a responsibility for education, and obviously they have a stand it. But uh, it's a partnership between parents and government. Uh, and it's important to note that this is, this is, there's no legislation here, there's no public hearing. Uh, this was just a, a, a mandate from, from the mayor's office. This, this was not. Uh, Subject to legislative process. So there's been, there's been very little opportunity for any feedback to be given about this. Um, there was no debate uh, and there was no public hearing. So all we're asking for is an alternative so that some parents can, can do something else. And I mean, you can look at the curriculum. Uh, it, it's required by law that the school is going to do. Um, there, there are things in there that we think uh, parents are just For instance, uh, they talk about the fact that uh, uh, sexual, sexuality is a normal and healthy part of life from, from birth to death. Uh, which is an, a notion that may not be too uh, many, many parents may not be too comfortable with. And they tell the kids that only they are the ones who can decide when, when they're ready to have sex. Meanwhile, most parents think that uh, kids should be asking at least until they're adults. Uh, so, you know, if, if, if you were to look at the curriculum carefully, you might find 
uh, but it's not really presenting your values, but, but different values. And, and we're just asking for the school system to have something like And you guys will be raising the awareness to the press conference for the young guy. That's right. Yeah, on, on Tuesday at noon at City Hall, we want to gather some parents together. Uh, we had a press conference in, in August when we first learned about the mandate to raise some awareness. Uh, but uh, it was sort of the beginning of just this old culture wars thing where there's people who want abstinence education, people who want comprehensive. And people think that you know, comprehensive education means they teach kids how to put on the condom. But uh, we want to highlight the fact that there are, there are things in the curriculum that a reasonable person could find offensive. Uh, you know, obviously some parents will think it's fine to have their kids for homework go down to the corner store and catalog the comments or to go visit a clinic. Maybe some parents will fine, but I think other parents won't find that to be okay. Uh, you know, the, the curriculum, the middle school curriculum refers kids to a website called GoAskIowis.com. Uh, I find it absolutely horrendous that, that that's the case. The website is full of, of things that are terribly offensive uh, to me. Some parents will think that's fine. We just want parents to know and make an informed decision about whether or not they think this is what their kids should be taught in school. And if they think it's not, I think they deserve an alternative because it's not fair to have these kids you know, opt out, which they have the parents have the right to have their kids out. But then what? They're going to go sit and study it all. And they, they do need to learn tools and they do need to learn information about how they can protect themselves from sexual transmitted diseases and from pregnancy and binary accidents. Michael, you're a former elected official. What do the elected officials say about this particular matter right now? I, mean, no, I, I, think, I can't speak for other elected officials in New York City. I think it, those who are one of the interests of the constituents, they should push the mail into having two curriculums. One that's not that active program for those who are absent based program. And I think that way you have that choice. And that's important that they can do that if they really want to represent their constituency. But I also want to mention to you that we also have support for two other things we here on the Bronx. We have an open bar agreement with Lana, which is a sort of um, actually been as a model here in the Bronx as well as the Word of Life uh, Church in Athens here in the Bronx as well. But they'll be joining us hopefully at the news conference uh, next week. So it's not just Greg and I and others who are doing this. It's the community base. We're involving parents, and there are a couple other groups that we have involved in this coalition to make sure we can get the word out. But it's not about stopping such an education. We want to have it. We want to make sure it's the absolute state and the parents also have a say. A recent survey that was conducted by the Essence Magazine of 1,500 black teens is 13 to 21. And 45% of them have said that they wanted to hear from their parents and for the parents' attitude were. They wanted their parents to tell them about abstaining from sex until they were older. They wanted to hear from their parents. They didn't want their parents cut off from them. And if we follow the most program, uh, as we understand it, parents are, are going to be cut off. I think parents cannot afford to be cut off in such an important book. Okay, because the message that you're saying is who puts it out there so it's more of a, you know, there's more publicity going towards the area of having sex than actually pulling back and being out there. Which works, you know, just with some of the things that we, you know, some of the things we said and we want to pull up some of these questions again or let me go back to that slate again. That we had earlier, that they actually showed some of the things that actually being talked about in these classes. Because uh, if you get an opportunity to see this, then maybe you'll see as a parent or as uh, somebody that's connected to a young person, uh, maybe why it's important to have a conversation and to push your elected official to be out there. Um, I'm a parent myself, and I have to look at it, and I find uh, some of the things on there kind of offensive, considering I've got a son that's in the middle school. Uh, and uh, if you're a parent, you might feel the same way. So, one of the opportunities so that you can see exactly what's out there, and we'll try to throw that full page back up there in a few seconds so that we can see it. We'll go through it again, and then we're also going to get these gentlemen here to give us more information uh, as to how you can be a part of this ongoing discussion and join them if you feel uh, an objection and wanting to uh, opt out or opt to try that. So, uh, let's get that full page back up there in a few seconds. So, what's happening? So, you know, it's bad enough that the, the media message for young people is about, is about sex. Uh, we are able to be selling jeans or cars, it's about sex. So we need to hear from the responsible about both the, the parents, especially, and from teachers in school about the necessity of avoiding teenage sex. It can have bad consequences, not, not just being a teenage parent. Uh, it's, it's, it's STDs. It's limiting your choices early in life. Those are the kind of things that the parents have to discuss with, with their child. And it's just uh, schools also discuss those kinds of things. And not just tell them you can protect yourself from like, an AIDS, HIV, or STDs by using a condom and avoiding and avoiding pregnancy that way. It's about the only thing that really works is abstinence and having a life plan uh, that you have. In a recent Exit Magazine article about uh, it's the life of teenagers, a patient of boys said he advised parents that they should put their daughters in sports because girls are involved in sports are focused. They don't have time for boys and they don't have time for having sex. And so if a patient of boys can have that as advice for parents, I think parents need to hear it and do the sort of thing with their child. 